Hello, in this video I want to share the great news that uh, we have seen or yesterday on the 8th of February uh, the draft regulations or amendment to the regulations was, was published. It's a draft, there is a public comment period until March and then it goes into the normal legislative process. So it's not the law yet but it's important because we know where the journey is going and obviously most of the ideas will be in there. We as IBN will obviously comment as well on the draft uh, regulations and submit these comments. But I thought I want to share some of my observations already in this video. Police clearance certificates, okay, you only need them in the last five years where, we, where you lived. This is just now the implementation of a directive or a previous directive. We have this already since a year, but it's in the draft regulations. The same applies to medical certificate. You do not need a radiological report anymore. Also, no news. Continuing with no real news, however, it's now in the legislation at least, is who is allowed to change from a visitor visa in South Africa? Remember, the general rule is you're not allowed to stay, change your status from within South Africa on a visitor visa. But for years, spouses of South African permanent residents, holders and citizens were allowed to change their status here. That same applies to children of permanent residents, holders and citizens. Also not really uh, news. Um, and um, I think the important one now, and it's very, very clear, that parents of children who are citizens or permanent holder, residence holders can now also change their status here. So if you're a foreign parent of a South African child, because the mother or the father was South African and the child is South African, you can change your status in country. So you can come in on a visitor and then apply here for any other long-term visa. I think that's very important. Both of these things have been changed because of um, constitutional court rulings. So the legislation follows court dis decisions. Now coming to the new stuff. Okay. Um, if you are regularly watching these videos, I already indicated is that, that we might get, might get a point-based system for our work visas. And surprise, surprise, it's in there. Okay, So in the draft regulations, we find a hint of point-based system, but it's still very vague and it's not really clear to me. Um, two observations I want to make. Number one, according to the current drafting or the current wording, this point-based system is applicable to all work visas in terms of Section 19 and that would mean actually for ICTs and critical skills. That surprises me a little bit, to be honest. Um, yeah, but, but be it as it may, let's see what comes out of it in the final regulations. The other thing is um, what I wanted to maybe point out is that the criteria for the point-based systems are not very surprising. Language skills, qualification, age, uh, skills. But then there is one, one criteria in here which I find very, very strange. And I would uh, strongly suggest to the legislator to change this. And that criteria is ability to adapt in the Republic. Ability to adapt in the Republic. Now that's very wide. How do you measure this? How do you determine this? How do you, how do you what's the criteria for that? So obviously this is in here to potentially give the politicians and the administration lots of leeway to use lots of discretion and say, no, certain people from Africa, they can't adapt here or certain religious uh, uh, groups can't adapt in the Republic, etc., etc., etc. So I think that needs to be very abolished and it's just, it's just way too wide. Okay, moving on. So digital nomad. It's in there as well. Okay, I have, I have personally, uh, in my very boring time during COVID, um, um, uh, suggested to the minister that maybe South Africa should uh, uh, introduce this. This was 2020. Um, the president then took the uh, idea up, not from me, obviously, but they had their own idea givers. But uh, in, the, in the state of the nation in 2022, in January 2022, um, and now two years after the president announces, our minister of home affairs on the last day of this before the next sona publishes these regulations i don't know in a company it's like open mutiny or something like that it's it's i mean four hours before the president says in the new state of nations we're getting published anyway but it's in there so um again it's not 100 clear but it's it i think the journey is going the following way 
I do think that the digital nomad or remote work, and I think we need to be very clear here, I always call it digital nomad, but I think I must call it now remote work. Why? Because you must be employed overseas by a foreign employer. So you can't be a freelancer. It doesn't say that. It's very, very clearly says you must be employed by a foreign employer and then obviously work outside, so to say, uh, of South Africa. You must earn more than a million rand a year. It's not clear if it's gross or netto. I don't think a million is too high. I think it's 50,000 euros, $50,000. I think that's realistic. I think they, they really took a, a good threshold here because remember, and that's the other news is on the remote work visa, you can bring your whole family with. So I, I, I kind of agree with the one million. Um, and then how long can it be issued for? I think up to three years. Why? Because they put it in a section in the Act, in the long-term visitor visas, and not in the Act, in the regulations, which indicate that it can be issued for three years. I am not 100% certain of this, however, because actually the wording within it says that if you apply for a visa, or if your visa gets issued for more than six months, then you must apply for registration with our receiver of revenue within a 12 month period and that I don't understand. So we will, I will ask this in the comments, we will obviously work on this and I'm sure in the next months we see clearer. But from my first interpretation, up to three years, but please remember for tax compliance, you must register with SARS if you stay longer than six months. That makes sense because obviously Home Affairs was not able in two years to align our tax legislation like other countries would do for remote workers. This clearly didn't happen. So there is a potential tax liability for the overseas employer to pay, pay as you earn over to our receiver if you stay here for more than six months, right? So that's, that's important. Um, yeah, but that's, that's really on the remote worker. So that's good news. Next one, um, critical skills. So um, there is one year critical skills again. Uh, people who have been here for a very long time or watch these videos, you all know that we used to have a job seeker critical skills which was issued for one year without a job offer. This is not what it is now. You still need a job offer. You must have a job offer and letter of employment. However, you're going to get a one year critical skills with the proof that you applied for the registration with a professional body. Why is this important? Some professional bodies like the Engineering Council take months to register you. Currently it was that you can only apply for a critical skills visa with a successful registration at the professional body. But this delayed the start date of your employment by months. Now which employer waits months? I mean, that's difficult. Now for this they introduced now this one year and you must only prove that you applied for the professional registration then get, you get a one year visa then you obviously have one year to get that and then you extend it with the fully registration. Okay, So I think that's super useful and very very good. Um, two more remarks and then I'm finished. No changes to retirement visa so far, I haven't seen anything. No introduction of minimum age, although I'm not 100% sure if they could actually introduce this in the regulations, but I haven't seen, there's nothing on retirement visa, so that's good. Um, and then uh, one technical thing is um, they're also amending the permanent residence uh, for critical skills with this one year uh, with, with, the, with the skills. Um, that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, you know, if you, if, 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 if you want to apply for permanent residence based on critical skills, you should be fully registered with a professional body and you should not just be able to apply for permanent residence critical skills based on submitting the application to the professional body. Okay, it's a technical thing. I think what happened is they copy and pasted their suggestion from temporary residence over to permanent residence and didn't change that. But uh, that's this minor point. We will make all these comments and please, if you have other comments and other questions, um, yeah, post them under the video. Um, we would try to answer some of them or we compile them all together and then we make another video out of it. I hope this was uh, useful, uh, not too long and you could follow it. Uh, I wish you a very nice weekend and just the last sentence, we are on a good track. The, these suggestions in general are good. Yes, they're not 100% clearly defined yet, but it's a draft and it's not the final legislation. But all the ideas which were circulating out there are implemented and I think in general, these are very, very good implementations. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.